Hi folks, Jeffrey Smith from SEO Design Solutions here. A good friend of mine asked me to take a look at his website and sort of diagnose the reason why he was not ranking for a, a wider array of, of keywords. So what we're doing is we're looking at the way that the site architecture and the site structure is laid out. So we talk a lot about tiering your, or creating faster navigation structures within a website. And the reason that's important is, is that you have to realize that from the bag of words model, which is essentially how s search engines interpret data on a website, they're taking all the elements in consideration. They're looking at all the links in the footer. They're looking at all the server-side includes that occur on the sidebar, for example, the, uh, the alt attribute links that are behind the images, and the textual areas of the page to try to determine what it is that this page is about. Now, there are other indications such as the, the URL structure, the title tag, the number of links leaving this page, uh, the number of the links that are, that are leaving the page and where they're going to, the way that this page is referenced, it sort of creates this, this type of integrity, if you will, to identify that this page is specifically about a particular topic. The downside of that is, is if you have a, a lot of co-occurrence on the site where there's elements that are redundant, that are occurring across multiple pages, it makes it very difficult for this, for a search engine spider to parse this data and look at it outside of any one particular uh, method. We use a variety of tools. One of the tools that we like to use, for example, is, is uh, Sionj. And this allows us to basically go in on a page-by-page -page level and assess, in fact, if the, uh, the market focus, which is what this page is about, is is scaled appropriately. We can look at the amount of link flow that's leaving the page or within the page. We can essentially look at the market focus rank or the components that construct the page. We can also look at the incoming anchor text to see if that corresponds to what the page is designed to rank for. And this is basically what we talked about briefly uh, because we're looking at the way that search engines parse the page, which is through shingle analysis. If you're not familiar with that, basically, if you if you uh, a shingle is just a group of words, and so based on the proximity, the prominence, and the different elements that occur within a page, um, it sort of comprise the, the the focal point, but essentially what this page can rank for. So I just took one little snippet, which is nothing more than, than phrase match. But if I wanted to, to rank for barcode labels and equipment, that just goes to show that this co-occurrence of having that throughout the website, you're going to see that this is what would allow me to rank for that. So it's really the correlation between market focus, so barcode labels and equipment, well, that, well they, there they are, because that's a, just the way that their site is structured. There's a high frequency for that keyword as well as the main keyword. But you also have to think about this. If I can just take you over to another perspective here, when you want to look at you know the phrases they're ranking for, this is just an example of using SEM Rush to get an idea of what the main phrases they, they have that are driving traffic to their site, what percentage of traffic they're receiving from particular keywords in relative positions. You can also look at how much that phrase has stemmed. And so looking at these different um, elements right here, I can see that the site has not had a tremendous amount of stemming, which means that it's essentially ball rolling or consolidating link flow to one particular area in the website. Uh, that's good in some instances if you wanted to use a wildcard ranking tactic where you're linking back to uh, the main page or the home page of your site with various anchor text so that it sort of stems and begins to rank for everything. But also you want to make sure that your internal pages are getting sufficient link flow as well so that they, they start to rank for individual phrases so that a person doesn't have to drill down and go through five steps to get to the page or the, the component of whatever it was that they were looking for. So. We briefly touched on this, but I wanted to give you an example of what I was indicating to him. On this particular site, there's a high occurrence because the way that this, the site was constructed, that these, the template has a high occurrence of, of links on the sidebar. Not only do they skew the page focus, if I were to look at this from the perspective of the Google text cache, you'll see this is the spider's view of this page. And they're looking at code to text ratio. They're looking at uh, you know links and a variety of other things. So these are all the little, this is the, the primary navigation, for example. Here's the sidebar. And so there's a lot of text in Basically, if you have a footprint that has this on every page across your website, that means that you know these areas are, are typically uh, you know they're, they're part of a visual page segmentation algorithm where they're going to get neutralized or nullified to some degree, and it's really looking at the body text to distinguish this page some in some way, shape, or form outside of the other elements that are present right here. So. Unfortunately, he does not have enough anchor tech, or excuse me, enough content within this body segment to really break these pages apart. So what happens as a result of that is you have a, a, a suppression, if you will, of your ranking factor because at that time, 
every page really does look like the same page and so one of the things that we suggest for that is that you have different templates for different portions of the website so for example this is my tier one page which is the home page the next thing I want to focus on is having sufficient tier two pages so it would be barcode labels barcode ribbons barcode printers but instead of having that on every page in the site I would create a secondary portion of the site or just a segment that's one you know folder away so to speak where I could consolidate that or a flat page in the site architecture that's like sort of like my options on that options page which we will consider the tier 2 page we'll have barcode labels barcode ribbons barcode printers scanners etc and all these elements can then be fed in that third tier so it's, it's just to give an example if I were to look at uh, let's just go to uh, the barcode printers and we're going to look at the zebra page so for example so once again on this page we have to look at you know the link flow that's coming into the page only four deep links not a lot so if you're going to try to get this particular page to rank for what's in the h1 what's in the uh, the URL structure or the or the title itself you really are going to need a tremendous amount of link flow because once again it's looking at all those server side includes all the outbound links it's going to try to determine how theme they are and how relevant if I were him in this situation uh, I if I had my my, my secondary second tier pages I would consider revising the template so that there's less uh, link flow hemorrhaging away and less link loss so that you can concentrate more on the anchors and pushing link flow into the third tier pages so for example if this is the zebra brand uh, you know I would have brands for example and I would use this a different type of a secondary navigation structure at this point which I would only link to that particular brand maker model so you can use lateral linking from brand to brand but ideally that would be my tier two page this would be considered my tier three page I'm drilling down I'm now into the make and model but once again this page having a small footprint of trying to distinguish itself amidst all the the other noise on the page it's going to have a very difficult time ranking now if you had the, if you had sealed this page up appropriately by removing these other unnecessary links in the sidebar and really just created the, the focal point of whatever that was you'd accomplish two things you make it much easier for search engines to identify the relevancy of that page the shingles aren't bleeding and hemorrhaging over the page and you're gonna have a lot more buoyancy for the ranking factor so the, the, the whole suggestion here is you know virtual theming is one particular tactic which you can you know cross link to various elements but if I were him I would just use you know focus on making that breadcrumb navigation a little stronger more prominent in area for usability and in which case sort of leading a person back to you know that brand or model and that brand or model would then link back to the page like this here that has all the make uh, information and data that you could use to either provide link flow out of this page itself could be utilized it could utilize a uh, a no index comma follow methodology so all the link flow does pass through to the appropriate pages or you could just at that point you know this is the the third tier page if I go back to the second tier it only uplinks to the second tier pages and the first and the second tier pages link back to the main root folder if you will or the landing pages that correspond to that so the idea here is is uh, minimize the links that leave the page look for the structure that you want to create and try to minimize the noise so that you don't end up creating uh, too much work for search engines to try to sift and sort through all the the muck and the mire trying to determine what your page is about hope you found that useful my name is Jeffrey Smith from SEO Design Solutions Thanks again.